Hey guys, it's Mike with SB Reflights. I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough today on how to convert pretty much any black box, including the SB Reflights, uh, over to Apex Control. Uh, this process works exactly the same for the Reef Keeper as well. And if you're going to run a Reef Angel or Arduino controller on a 0 to 10 volt analog signal, it'll work for that as well. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to tap into the dimmer circuit on any light that has manual dimmer pots. And we're going to take that 0 to 10 volt signal and control it with our uh, controller, whichever one we're using. So uh, to get started, uh, doing some lights for a friend here, we've got four lights. These are actually from the uh, Facebook uh, Black Box Proof Group, Group Buy. So they're kind of the first generation of my lights. And uh, uh, internally, they're basically the same as the SB Reef lights, uh, minus the improved fans, the built-in mounting legs, the improved spectrum diode layout, and the, uh, the two-year warranty, of course. Um, however, these do have an extremely good layout and spectrum, uh, better than what you'll find on eBay. Uh, so if you are looking for new lights and the SB Reef lights are a little out of your reach, uh, definitely check out the group buy, and uh, they kind of bridge the gap between the, uh, the less expensive eBay lights. Um, so what we've got here is we've got four units, and he's got a real nice hanging mount that he's made that allows the lights to come out real easily. And uh, we're going to try to do everything on the rack to make it really easy so it doesn't have to, uh, to come apart. The parts that you'll need, um, one, if you go to the Apex group, you can print out the owner's manual and there's actually some really good directions. The one thing I will note, if you look here, is that their, their plus and minus, their positive and negative wires are actually backwards and they actually note that in their instructions. So we're going to be hooking up the positive to black and the negative to red, which is kind of the opposite of what we would think and uh, of course what we would do with the reef keeper so just make a note of that um, you will need uh, some wires and for this particular one we've got the actual apex rj45 jacks with uh, it's probably about six feet of cable and then the ends of the cable are uh, pre-stripped and we're going to be using uh, the red and the black cables only the other four uh, two cables are not used at this point um, if you're doing a Reef Keeper, uh, their plug has a Molex 2-pin connector on one end and then of course black and white on the other. And uh, the other things we'll need today is we're going to get just two cheap buses, pick these up at Home Depot, and we're going to run them as a two-channel, so we will need to do a small uh, sky bridge from one side to the other, and we'll show that in a little bit. Uh, you'll need some small butt connectors, a couple screws to put, the, uh, to put down the uh, buses. Uh, and then you'll need some, some basic tools, a screwdriver, uh, wire cutters, and some crimpers and strippers. Uh, and that's pretty much all you will need. So we're going to get started on this in just a second. All right, so let's get the first unit done here. Um, there are six screws on the outside that we're going to be undoing. And so that only takes a second. And uh, if I had an electric drill, that would go a little bit faster. Uh, I do. But we will... Uh, run with what we got here because this literally only takes a couple minutes to do. Alright, almost done. Now the version of this hack I show you guys is going to be the simplest version. Um, you certainly can put a little more effort into it and find actual connectors uh, that will fit into the dimmer uh, line without having to actually cut and splice wires and you can put it back to stock a little easier. Uh, but either way they'll still work just fine. Alright, once you've pulled all six screws, pull off your knobs, keep track of your parts as you go, and then you need to get your nuts loose, and they're usually just hand tight. Once you have both the nuts off, there's two little washers that will pop off when you pull these out. But we're now going to lift the top off. Now when you lift the top off, be careful because there's a lot of wires inside and there's not a lot of slack as you can see. And so you want to tilt it towards the control panel if you have the timer version. If you have the basic version, just look inside and see which way it's oriented. And so I'm going to go this way, which as you see is going to give me a little more room with the wiring. And to give me some more room to play with, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the wires. Just pay attention to where they went. 
And by the way, if you were going to change out your PCB board, because I do sell the replacement PCB boards with all the diodes, so you can upgrade to the SB Reef Light Spectrum, this is as simple as it is. It's literally six screws followed by three clips, six more small screws on the heat sink. This piece comes out, put the new one in, clip all your wires back in. If you have a different brand of box, say the Mars Aqua, these wire clips may not be long enough to reach where you want them to reach, at which point you would just cut them, splice in a small piece of wire, use the butt connector to connect back again. So again, they're, they're universal, they really will fit anything. Um, but we're going to make sure that we keep all these wires straight as to where they go. And I'm just going to do this to give me some more room to work with. And we are now completely separate. So we can take this piece, set it to the side, pull these washers off. And now we're going to get ready to pull out our dimmer circuit. And we are now more than halfway done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pull this plug out here and we need to watch the orientation as to how it is on the, on the circuit board. And if you look at the circuit board, I'll pull this protective film back a little bit, but it will actually say on here what it is. All right, let me give you a close up of the back of the dimmer board so you kind of understand what we're doing. If you look on here, and hopefully that'll focus in on me, and hopefully it'll focus in. There we go. All right, see the top where it says zero to 10 volt? And the middle is ground, and the bottom is on off. Now in some units, you're gonna have four wires. If you have four wires, it's actually gonna be zero to 10, then ground, then it's gonna be on off, and then ground again. And so you would ground the bottom wire, the on off, and the ground together, and then you would use the ground and the zero to 10 for your apex or your reef keeper. Now on this one, because we only have three, that, that middle ground is actually a common ground and we're gonna splice into it for both the apex and for the power on and off. And all it does is it allows you, when you pull this dimmer circuit out, to make sure that the driver continues to stay on. Uh, because there is a click built into this dimmer. When you turn that knob, you'll feel that first click. That's when it actually sends power to the drivers. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this now. All right, so looking at this again, I'm gonna make sure I keep my orientation on my wires straight so that I don't get them confused. And right now, if I notice, and this may not always be the case, but on this particular dimmer pot, I've got a long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash for the zero to 10. I've got short dashes only for the ground. And for the bottom one, which is my on off, I've got long dash X, long dash X, long dash X. So I'm gonna remember X is on off, short dash is my 10 volt, and then nothing but short dashes is gonna be my ground. So at this point I can pull this out and I'm good. If I follow the dimmer switch, you can either leave it in here if you want, it's not gonna hurt anything, that way it's there. But if you wanna disconnect it, you would disconnect right here, leave this blank. I'm gonna leave it in here because if we ever wanna switch back, it would be nice to go ahead and just have it kinda of sitting in here for us. All right, so at this point, I can start getting ready to splice into this. Now this is the scary part, and what I'm gonna do is take my wire cutters, and I wanna leave enough slack so that if I ever wanna hook this back up again later, I can do that. And so I'm just gonna cut back about here, and we're done. And then pull these apart so I can splice these. And that'll give me enough space. Then I'll take my wire strippers, and we're going to do about a little over a quarter, a little less than a half inch on these wires. These wires are pretty thin, so I'll usually twist them and then double them back on themselves before putting them into the butt connector. So we'll twist them up. And I'll double them back a little bit. Make sure nice and tight so they fit in there. That'll just give the butt connector a little more meat to grab onto because these are pretty thin gauge wires. Gonna make sure that these are really tight. Um, it's very frustrating when you go through all the wiring, button the unit back up together, and these wires are not in there tight, and you end up with a short or intermittent use. Now, if you hook these wires up incorrectly, which some people do by accident, what will happen is you're gonna have a full signal 
going in instead of that variable signal and your lights will just be 100% on and uh, they will not dim for you. Alright, I got all the three of these on here and so now I'm ready to work with the uh, source wire coming in. Now our apex wires are not long enough so we're going to run this bus and we're going to run wires in from the bus. All right, now to get from the bus, which is going to be hooked up to the apex, to the actual units, I'm going to run wire through the small hole that we just emptied out by removing the dimmer pot. And the cheapest thing I found that works well uh, is to go to Home Depot, and for about 12 bucks, you can get 50 feet of seven core wire. Now it is stiff wire, so it's not something you want to bend all the time. So if it's in a location where you're constantly moving it, you might want to go with braided wire. It's a little more expensive, but uh, the solid wire definitely works. And this probably won't be able to see, but there's seven different cores inside there. So I'm going to strip this out to all the individual cores here in just a second. All right, jumping out of order for just a second before I splice into those butt connectors we just did. But this is the apex wire. Now, the apex wire will not reach all the way to his lights, so that's one reason that we're using the bus connectors. But the other reason is we want to be able to pull the lights in and out of the fixture for maintenance or cleaning or anything else without having to disconnect it all the way to the apex. So for ease of use, what I've done is I've already stripped one of the wires, and uh, literally you just hook it up to the four spots on the bus. Pretty simple. And uh, notice that the yellow and the green wires, we're not going to use those, so I'll just cut those back short. Uh, pretty straight and simple. Continuing, what I've done now is if you look over here, I've already got all my apex wires hooked up. Just red, black, red, black, red, black, red, black. So it's going to be pretty simple. So I'm going to have blue channel, white channel, blue channel, white channel. Pretty straightforward, okay? Um, this is going to run two lights. This will run two lights. This one here will run two lights and two lights. I've got my four core, or I should say seven core, that I've stripped back to four core, and I've already got that kind of set up for the apex, or excuse me, for the light side. I'll do the other side later. And it's gonna go through this hole that we emptied out for the dimmer, and as you see, it actually fits quite well. So I'll do that after I hook everything up. Now what I'm gonna show you real quick is just how to hook up these butt connectors. Now, remember our pattern. So we had long line, short line for positive, or excuse me, for zero to 10. We had the middle one for our ground, which is dash, 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 and the bottom one was long X, long X, long X, and that's for our on off. What's interesting is if we look at the other one over here, completely different wire code. Um, they tend to just grab whatever wire they've got around to put these dimmer uh, drivers together. So the important thing is just make sure you keep it the right way. Look at it before you take it off the dimmer pot to make sure that you've got it going the right direction. So um, the first thing we need to do is we've got to do a common ground. So this is going to be the ground for both units, um, for the on off and for the control from the apex. So I've got a small little piece of wire I made to short the two out and then I'll put in also my uh, my negative as well so if we remember on this um, I've got I'm going to use um, red and black for one channel um, and then I'm going to use the uh, I'm sorry let me rephrase that I'm going to use white and black for the white channel and blue and red for the blue channel just to keep things simple and easy so I'm going to go ahead and take the positive, which will be my blue, and I'm going to hook it up to the top wire, and all we got to do is slide her in there, make it just a tiny bit shorter, slide it in, and crimp it down, make sure it's tight. Now on the other side, this is our ground, which is going to go in the middle, but we're also going to have this one go in the middle as well. And so what I'll do is just quickly twist these together. Make sure the end's nice and straight so it'll go into the connector. And snug fit, but it goes in. Now I'm going to crimp that down. And then the last one, now that I've got that common ground, is going to go to the power. That one's in. Crimp down, make sure they're all nice and snug. 